Hello YouTube, my name is Sebastian and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can optimize your scripts and code um, so that they'll run smoother and better and faster and all that sort of good stuff. So this is something that I reckon you, you might have done a project or something and have a lot of code and it might start to slow a bit down so you want to optimize it. And uh, this is going to be quite kind of a tutorial on how you can do this um, and go about the, the the way you can go about optimizing your code. So what I have here, this right here to the left, this is my tile meeting script from the tutorial I made on tile collisions. And on the right here, I have the same script, does the same thing, but I have optimized it so that it uses a lot less resources um, when you're using it and uh, the way I've gone about this optimizing the script of course there's a lot of stuff you can do but optimizing in general is just getting rid of stuff that's useless and that's 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 your main goal getting rid of useless stuff or making the calculations faster anything like that so first of all if we look at this script right here what we can see is first of all the the part that's taking a lot of processing power is this right here the meeting variable because this one every step of the game it checks for all these time map get a pixel all these guys check it checks for four at a time all the time whether or not we're moving and wherever we are moving so what I thought is we don't need to do this. If we're standing still, we don't even need to go in and check these guys. We, why would we do that? That's a waste of time because we aren't going to collide with anything if we're standing still. Next of all, if we're moving to the right, we don't need to check at the points at our left because we aren't going to move into anything like that. So with those two things in mind, I created this script instead that splits up all of this and takes it uh, and... Uh, yeah, so it only it only runs this code, checks for collision when you're moving, and then it also only checks if you're moving to the right, it only checks to the right, and if you're moving up, it only checks to up, and you can of course move both way both ways the same time at the same time. So I'm gonna go through this. So first of all, I split this meeting variable up. I have a right meeting, left meeting, uh, up meeting, and down meeting. So for every direction that we might go in. So first of all, as we did with the last script, we are saving the uh, current position that the player is in because we're going to move him and then move him back. Check we're going to move him. Check for tile collisions and move him back. So first of all, if our x position is or if, what we're going to check for the x axis here, that's the position that we're going to check for. So, what the first thing I want to do is to check left and right if we're moving to the left or the right. And if we are, then go in and check for tiles uh, to the left or the right. So first of all, I'm checking if the xx does not equal the xp. So if the, the, uh, the value that's passed into the script does not, is, isn't the same as the current position. So if, if it's different, that means we've moved. Because if they are equal to each other, that means we're standing still and we aren't really doing anything. So if we aren't doing, so if we are moving, if they are not equal, then we are going to set our x x or x position to the x x. So we're going to move it. Then we're going to check if our x x is bigger than the x position, the the x position we had before. Or it's lower if it's bigger that means we are going to the right and otherwise we're going to the left and then we just have the right meeting and it's just equals tile map get a pixel and then we're checking for the right top corner and the right bottom corner otherwise if we're going to the left we're checking at the left corner and uh, the left top and the left bottom and the same goes for the uh, y coordinates up and down we are again checking if the uh, y does not equal the yp or the, the previous position so if we're moving up or down then we are changing the position and 
we will be changing uh, or we'll be checking if our yy value is greater than the yp value that means we've moved down so that means we're going to check at the right bottom pixel and the right left pixel and otherwise uh, on the other hand with the up we're checking the up right and up left corner so that's basically how it works and I can prove to you that this is running a lot faster it's actually double if it's double as efficient and as this one and you can do that yourself if you want to check this so the way I've set it up to make this work if we go to the workspace right here this is the object as checking for collisions if we go to the end step what I've done is this is my usual collision checking and this is using the first script the tile meeting the unoptimized and then this one right here that's exactly the same code but that's just for the tile meeting too, the optimized script so we're running both the same amount of times this at the same time so that that way we can look at both of them directly side by side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch the in the debug mode here because then we can record our what's happening and see how much like uh, time the CPU is using so if we move this window over here if you go to the debugger right here you might not have this let's just exit out of this you might have something one bit window open but what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click here on the blue bar and then we're gonna split it to the no yeah left whatever so split it to the left or up or down whatever just you get another window and this window you wanna set the type to profile then you can hit this button here that will record some steps of the game and then tell you then you can see how much processing time is used um, in all of the different object events and stuff like that so we're going to start re recording here and then we're just going to move around so right now we are moving around so we'll be checking we'll be recording while moving which means that's where both of the scripts will be using the most processing power so we we have recorded for like eight thousand, almost a thousand steps here. So let's stop it. And as you can see, the majority of our um, percentage or processing power used is in the st end step event. So object zero dot end step used twenty one percent. So we can open that. And then right here, what we can see is we can see the tile meeting that uses eleven percent of this, whereas the tile meeting two, the optimized, only uses four percent. So it's actually less than the it, it's over double as efficient so we can expand these even more and you can see because this one has to do the time map get a pixel like how many times is that it's gonna do it uh, four times every step and that uses almost four percent whereas the time map get a pixel here uses less than one percent so that's pretty awesome and that is really really good so we optimized it very well and we can might actually be able to optimize it even further because what we're doing right here is we're checking for the B box right a lot of times and the B box top and left we're using those variables again and every time we use them this script has to look up in the code and find B box right find out what it is so here when we call it the first time it's gonna look at the sprite find out what's our binding box to the right and it's going to go on, then it's going to come here and it's going to look it up again. It's not going to save it, it's just going to look it up again. And that takes some time. So what we can do instead, that would be to make some variables just in the start that contain all of these. So we could do a variable br for bbox right. And that will be bbox right. And we actually have a problem with this. Okay, no, we don't. Let's, uh, I, just, I thought we had a problem because what I just thought is if we define them up here and then later move here, they won't be in the right space. But, yeah, that won't work. Never mind. We cannot optimize that in a smart way, an efficient way, I think. Not the, with the way that it's set up. But if you had this over here, instead of using Bbox right here, two times you might as well just do a variable and have two of those beatbox right so make a variable that will a local variable that we can store beatbox right in because then it will it'll be far it's faster to look up local variables than it is to use beatbox right every time and left and top and bottom but 
that's actually the um, main part of this. So that's pretty much it for optimizing your scripts. And as you can see, it works splendidly. Like we really got some performance out of that. Like double the performance from just changing up the code a little bit. Like it is a bit more complicated maybe. And I had to do some trial and error while uh, working my way through this. But it really worked out well in the end, I think. And the performance is really noticeable. Not right now because I'm running with like 4,000 or 5,000 frames anyways. But in the statistics, it's noticeable. So I really hope you could use this video. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'll gladly answer all of them. And... Yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this and I hope you learned something useful from it that you can use later on in your game developing career. So yeah, have a nice day. Goodbye.